Hello and welcome to Reactive JavaScript. My name is Nelson Lacay, and in this series, we're going to explore reactive programming and the reactive extensions for JavaScript version 5. So I've been a web developer for quite a while, even before J jQuery was really a big thing. And I've seen the web move forward so much over the last many years, even programming in general, not just the web itself. And what we see lately is we see this big move towards reactive programming. So in this series, I want to talk about what Reactive is and how we can make better software faster. So what is Reactive Programming? Well, Reactive Programming is not a specific library framework or piece of code. Instead, it's a way to think about your code. It's a way to reason about it and write code. It's all about describing our applications in terms of data flowing through pipelines of transformations. And then we respond to those, those pipelines and we produce some sort of result on the user interface. It has an excellent property of making it so that when we depend on these data streams, our user interface will automatically update when any of that data changes. As a result, software written in, with the reactive paradigm is, tends to be much more concise and much shorter and much easier to reason about. So that's what reactive programming is. What about reactive extensions? Well, reactive extensions are a group of libraries that bring reactive programming to many languages. I'm sure you guys have written reactive code in the past, but you never really thought of making that into a methodology or a paradigm. And reactive extensions sort of codifies that whole process, that whole methodology, and turns it into a very, very powerful library with many features that follow this particular paradigm. So who uses reactive programming? Well, that's kind of like asking who uses object-oriented programming, who uses functional programming. The answer is pretty much everyone in some, in some sort of way, because again, it's sort of this paradigm. Everyone has accidentally written reactive code without realizing it in the past. But let's go ahead and talk about the people who have specifically used a or built a reactive library or reactive framework. So we have Microsoft, and they really popularized this whole paradigm by creating reactive extensions for .NET, and subsequently they created the JavaScript port for it. So again, that, that brings reactive, the reactive paradigm to those languages. And then we have Netflix. Uh, Netflix is a huge uh, part of the movement for reactive code. In fact, they wrote the Java port for reactive extensions. So the, the, the Netflix infrastructure is very, very reactive. And we have Google. Uh, Angular 2 actually uses and has a dependency on reactive extensions for JavaScript version 5, the exact thing we're going to be learning in this course. So if you have any interest in, in working with Angular 2, you're going to have to know reactive extensions. And then finally, we have Facebook's React. Now, I threw that up there, even though it's not they don't use reactive extensions directly, but the React framework from Facebook takes a lot and borrows a lot of ideas from the reactive paradigm. So understanding that paradigm will help you understand React. And furthermore, if you wanted to, reactive extensions and React play very, very nicely together. So who is this course for? Well, do you want to be ready for Angular 2, understand core concepts of React and related frameworks, and especially, do you want to have a leg up in building modern real-time applications? Well, that's really who this course is for. It's about expanding your mind, showing you guys that you can think about problems a little differently and express your code so much cleaner and more concisely than previously. However, this course is not for everyone. If you do not have experience building applications, then this course might not be for you. And the reason for that is this course is all about expanding your mind and changing your perspective. And it might be difficult for somebody who doesn't have some experience building applications to look at the reactive version of our code and say, okay, that's where this thing helps. But if you do have that sort of experience, if you have written applications, you're gonna immediately look at this code and be like, wow, that used to take me a hundred lines to do and was brittle and error prone and all that stuff. And hey, now I can do it in 20 lines. So having that perspective is very important for following along with this course. Now, finally, this course is, you know, we talk a lot about the reactive paradigm and it's for anybody who wants to write code reactively, really, or use any of the variants of reactive extensions, but you have to understand JavaScript syntax. We will be using reactive extensions for JavaScript. So if you don't know JavaScript, you won't be able to follow along with the examples. But if you meet this criteria, this course is absolutely for you. And I'm really excited to show you guys how you can improve your code today and be ready for the future of web development. So I hope you guys enjoy the course and we'll see you guys in the next video.